Yeah. What's your future plans then? Uh, to keep my Peggy in a custom to her as she's been uh, brought up? Is he a grafter? Is he lazy or what? I don't know what to say, to be honest with you. Sounds lazy to me. He's the, the son-in-law that you wanted? No. If you've been on my channel for a while, you know that I'm not the biggest George advocate. You know that I feel some type of way about George, especially the way he's talked to or talked about Portia and Tasha, irregardless of their faults. And so for me to defend him says a lot. I think George has apologized enough. I think George has sucked up enough. I think George has tried to change himself enough. He doesn't deserve to do any more for Peggy. Peggy has done nothing to sort of redeem herself in this relationship. And the fact that his family came across as patronizing, disrespectful, derogatory. What other word can I pick? Oh my God, is my blood is boiling for George. And this is a lot given how I feel about him and how I feel about the way he's spoken to the women of color on the show. But anyway, I digress. And hey there, thanks for stopping by. It's Valerie. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe, click the like button, turn on the notification bell for when I upload new videos, and definitely leave a comment. We're still on our way to a thousand subs. Um, in this episode, I'll be reviewing Married at First Sight UK, season eight, episode 29. Here we go. It's the continuation of homestays and it's like, oh my God, can we have some joyful scenes at least? We can't have so much toxic drama. It's getting old. Anyway, Peggy and George are the first to be shown. They are going to Peggy's parents' house. I don't know why she sent them there. I think she just wanted to show that she comes from a posh background. That's the impression that I get. I'm a bit cynical when it comes to Peggy. I you know, anyway, it is what it is. So, you know, the dad says, you know, he has to sleep in a separate room to the one, you know, Peggy's sleeping in. And it's like, Peggy is what? She's almost 30, isn't she? And he is still wanting her, her. Well, he's not even a boyfriend. He's a husband. Unless they're telling us that Peggy and George have been pretending to be happily married. And the parents know this is why they don't want them to share a bedroom. It's like, why? She's been sharing a bedroom with him. She went to his place. She spent the night there. And then suddenly she's at home. She needs to, you know, sleep in a separate bedroom. Hey, it is what it is. They could have easily told her, you can't sleep in your old bedroom with your husband, but you can sleep in a different bedroom if they wanted to preserve her innocence. Or I don't even know why they did that. It doesn't make sense. And you can see from the parents that they feel some type of way about George. I think Peggy has been saying whatever she's been saying to her family. And so they feel some type of way about him. This can not all be about the squatting video. There's more to the story because the dad is, oh, will you keep her in the lifestyle she's accustomed to? Well, she should be working. She should be, you know, independent enough to sort of build a, a you know a lifestyle for herself and her husband she doesn't need to live the same way her parents brought her up though that doesn't make sense to me what he doesn't want her to suffer or what does he think george is scrounging is he's poor he's living outside it didn't make sense and for peggy to underestimate him peggy always wants to undervalue him and sort of minimize his achievements because apparently he he was doing something i've forgotten what he said and then he left he went to university and it seems like now he's a personal trainer a fitness coach or something to that extent and so he was saying that outside of the gaming he also has this job but because of the experiment he had to drop his clients so that he could participate in the experiment and it is, oh no he doesn't have any clients and it's like explain to them fully you know they already feel some type of way if you really liked this man you'd really be working very hard to create a great impression with your parents but you minimizing his accomplishments shows me that you really don't like him and you're looking for an excuse to get your parents on board or for your parents to say no we don't like him you have to break up with him that's the impression that i got that's the impression that i got and i'm sticking to that and then you have ros and thomas I don't even know why I went to their Instagram pages. Oh my God, I got a spoiler. And for me, it doesn't make sense. Something happened. It seems when Thomas was joking about the kids, something threw Rose off. And I think she realized that this is actually something that's permanent. It's not something that's for playing games or, or Thomas is in it for the long haul. Because her reaction and her behavior when they got to her place didn't make sense. She kept ignoring Thomas and the sister had to keep saying, you know, oh, Thomas is here, Thomas. And it's like, what happened? Because when they left the experiment, they were fine. 
When they got to Thomas's home, they were fine. What's happened between Thomas's home and her getting to her own place? That doesn't make sense to me. And the sisters, oh, I'm picking up brother and sister vibes. And it's like, that's not what we've watched all along. That's not what we've watched. What have we missed? It doesn't make sense. The math ain't mathing. It can't be the fact that she said, you know, uh, you know, oh, ye, I'm not ready to have children at the moment. That's not it. Something else is going on. And I wish they could show it to us so that we could get a full picture. Uh, you have Tasha meet up with a friend in the park uh, with Paul. I think Tasha and Paul have a great shot of making it. And I hope if nothing else, she goes to counseling and she works on herself because at times the way she says things can be offensive to someone and i don't think her all her intention is always meant to be malicious but her friends seem to re be really happy with her, with tasha and paul's relationship and how they're feeding off each other so we'll see how that plays out so we have tasha and paul go to paul's parents home am i the only one who's noticed the trend or maybe because i like paul and tasha i've noticed a trend whereby the only time we see them on camera outside of the commitment ceremony is when there's drama going on between the two of them otherwise we barely get to see them in the episodes we only get to see them either at the dinner party or at the commitment ceremony otherwise everywhere else they're in the background we don't even see their apartment i think the first time we saw the apartment was when they had their fallout and it's like why are the producers so keen to show us the bad bits for tasha and paul you don't mean to tell me that the only thing they did was sit in the park with her friend and there was nothing else they did during their time at tasha's place make it make sense and it's a pity that there are people who are already looking for anything that Tasha does wrong and they magnify it because she does go with Paul to his parents' house. And to me, it makes sense. It seems Paul was living with his parents and this is the first time that he's bringing a girl to his, play to his parents' house, not even his own apartment, but his parents' house. And I know the family seems welcoming. Um, the mother says, we've already got a spare key for you. And that's amazing, but coming from a different type of, because this is, you know, the African culture, they're welcoming, they're friendly, you know, they want her to feel at home, so they've got a, a spare key. But to someone like Tasha, that might not compute as, in, to her, that feels like um, it's giving up her independence. She is now having to move in to her uh, husband's parents' home and now having to function as you know, one of the kids in the household when she's been living independently on her own. So I don't think it's because she wanted to control Paul, the reason why she wanted to leave, but this is someone who's used to a different lifestyle and is now having to adapt suddenly and it's coming at her like a train, a fast train, and she doesn't know how to cope with that. And this is why she was very eager for them to, you know, move to Manchester, whereas his parents want him closer because this is their child. They want to have the opportunity to see him and sort of spend time with him. So I get where both families or where the parents are coming from and where Tasha's coming from. And I hope they are able to reach a compromise on sort of where they can move that sort of in between where it's close to, you know, Paul's family, but it's also close to Tasha's family. So I don't know. We'll see how that plays out. And then you have Arthur and Laura. I think Arthur's right. Controversial, yes. I think Arthur's right in the sense that, yes, Laura's upset that Arthur was disrespectful to or was abrupt with her friends. But she also has to understand that if she wants a relationship with Arthur, she needs to also look out, do what's in his best interest. Because at the end of the day, that relationship is just as important as a relationship with her friends, if not more important. So I don't get why she was upset. You know, yes, she has the right to express her concerns in regards how he spoke to her friends, but she also needs to be considerate of the fact that he has feelings as well. He has, you know, emotions. He's entitled to feel a certain type of way. Yes, maybe he should have asked him how he felt about the situation. And then once he expressed himself, she would then have told him how she feels about the way he spoke to her friends. And it's a pity that Laura, you know, returned back to the apartment. I don't think she liked the hotel. I think this was an excuse. And it's surprising that he was in a hotel. It doesn't make sense. He said, because it's in between apartments. Mm. Why didn't he take her to his family? Then was that too far for the producers? make it make sense it didn't make sense to me that he would want to take her to a hotel or is there something wrong with his apartment and he didn't feel it was worthy or someone like laura make it make sense i don't get that 
I don't even get why George is even wasting his time in trying to impress, you know, um, Peggy or Peggy's family because they feel some type of way about him. He's just wasting his time trying to apologize, trying to be on his best behavior. He's not the man for her. They've shown him that he's not the man for her. I don't know why he continues to want to impress her. Yes, he can try his best and be the best man he can be, but I think he needs to call it for what it is and just say a hey, call time and just leave because it's not he's not going to impress them in any way he's not going to change her mind or change her family's mind or opinion about him and his job because they don't understand they come across as you know they're stuck up i'm sorry as though you know they think they're better than everybody else and they will not tolerate or accept anything that doesn't align with who they are so he's wasting his time he needs to move on um and then i um Adrian and Matt, I don't even understand. So is that all they did then? Or is there more to come? I don't get that conversation. I don't get why the producers keep asking them to go on and on and on about the fact that, you know, they see things differently. Adrian thinks they're struggling. Matt thinks they're doing amazing. We've heard that before. Next. Um, and then Tasha. As I said, the producers are looking for 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 anything that will strike a co that will strike debate or conversations about I hate Tasha because that conversation doesn't make sense. So they refuse to discuss the argument that they had. But to me, the whole conversation with Paul's friends doesn't make sense. One, it looks like there's a lot of cut and paste and cut and paste of conversations or clips of conversation to make it make sense to what the producers are trying to show because I don't get the argument and I don't get why Tasha was so offended and then I don't know whether she made a sarcastic remark and they took the sarcasm bit and took everything else out because it doesn't make sense why she would be that disrespectful to Paul's friends given the fact that Paul told her that he does not want whatever happened between the two of them to repeat itself because he especially when he takes her around his friends so for her to behave in that manner after he told her and she promised him to me it doesn't make sense and even the friends sort of accept Paul saying you know no she's not as bad as she comes across she's actually amazing Everything doesn't make sense about that Paul and, and uh, Tasha scenario. I wish they could tell us the truth of what exactly happened. But whatever happened, the producers have their version or have decided to paint Tasha as the villain after they got rid of Portia. And so they will look for anything or everything that suits their narrative, irregardless of what was initially said or what was initially done, which is very infuriating, unfortunately. So... I really don't get it. So Tasha apparently didn't spend the night at Paul's. And she has this argument with Paul about the fact that Paul's parents are upset, which is understandable because, you know, they try to make her comfortable and then she just left without saying goodbye. I think she should that's the least she should have done, regardless of how sick she was. Um, because it's just a, just just respect. It just comes down to respect. And this is where the difference in cultures comes in because to Tasha it might seem like something petty, whereas to Paul's mum that's quite a big deal and that's quite offensive. And so for Tasha not to acknowledge that or not to understand what, what Paul is trying to say doesn't make sense to me because it seems her mother-in-law was very welcoming. And so for her not to just, you know, okay, I'm so sorry. You know, I was very sick. My biggest worry was I didn't want to continue to be sick and bring everybody else's health down. So that's why I felt I needed to go and sleep at the hotel. Please, could you apologize to your mother for me on, on, on my behalf? And when I see her, I will apologize. I also want to apologize to you, my husband, for putting you in this position whereby you're having to explain my actions and you're having to apologize on my behalf. That's all she should have said. And that would have been it and so the idea that she stormed off to me doesn't make sense it's ah it's giving a bit of immaturity on my part it's giving a bit of you know someone who's used to doing things their way and hasn't had to compromise and because paul is such an amazing guy and hasn't really asked her to compromise on anything this is where it's coming across as a bit selfish in my opinion so i hope somebody speaks sense into her as i've said to Paul is an amazing guy and I hope she doesn't lose him over something this petty. Um, and then you have uh, Peggy and her mom. 
I don't even know why we need all this nonsense. And I don't even know why, as much as George is not one of my favorite people, I don't even know why he's putting in so much effort. Because Peggy is speaking to her mom in her bedroom. They have to climb into a bed and, oh my God. And so she's saying, um, you know, is, is George the type of guy you wanted me to marry? Blah. How can they say he's lazy? Do they understand what gaming is? Do they understand that uh, some people make a lot of money from gaming alone? And they don't have any other job outside of gaming. And it seems this is the setup that George is trying to create for himself. The fact that Peggy went to his apartment and was that impressed. If he wasn't someone who was hardworking, how could he afford that lifestyle? Make that make sense? I don't like it. I don't like the fact that her mother called him lazy. That is very disrespectful and very derogatory and very... Uh, discriminative in the sense that they want someone who leads a lifestyle that they're used to or else that person is deemed to be lazy and it's like how dare you how dare you class him as lazy when you don't know this person oh my god I'm, i get in my feelings defending george as though he you know as though i know him personally but i don't like that i don't like injustice in any way and i felt that was unwarranted and that wasn't necessary and for peggy to say oh speaking to my mother has finally you know opened my eyes your eyes have been open since the start you've just been looking for something that offends you so that you can find an excuse to break up with George. Please keep quiet. Aww. <laughs> Arthur, Arthur really tries. Arthur really tries. It's a pity. I said this before. The problem is Arthur is li bilingual. And because he's bilingual and he comes from two different cultures, there are things that might be seen as offensive in the English culture that to his culture might be okay. And so at times he comes as across as brutally honest. But I think that's just who he is. That's how he was brought up. And I would rather somebody be honest than lie to me. Yeah, the brutal bit. I could do without as well, just like Laura. But I like the fact that he wrote his little letter and he got her flowers and made sure that they matched the flowers at the wedding, which shows a lot of thought on his part. And then he played tennis with her. And this time he actually played tennis. He wasn't flirting or messing about like he did with Ella. So that was cute to see. And you can see he's winning her over. I think, I think Arthur brings out the human side of Laura, the, the, the emotional side, the caring side, the compassionate side. So I think they would make a great couple if they worked. I think they would make an amazing couple. Um, so I don't know. We'll see how that plays out. Am I the only one who's starting to feel like all this drama is staged just for the viewers not to know who's going to make it and who's not? Uh, that's the impression that I'm getting because it's cute to see Adrian and Matt. They go to his hometown and, you know, he gets to sort of take her out to, to what appears to be a pub and they have this pub dinner and it's this massive steak. And I think they're trying to compete to see who will finish it. And seeing him struggle to finish this dinner and seeing him, you know, try his best to impress his woman was the most hilarious thing to watch. And it's nice to see she was also participating in it. And she was, she actually acknowledged that, you know, it's not the best time for you to try and make me laugh because, you know, she was struggling to finish her dinner as well. But seeing them enjoy each other's company, I think, showed her that he's not as serious as she thinks he is. And maybe the filming as well is something that took away the fun side of him. So it was cute to see. And with Tasha and Paul, I don't get what is going on. I don't know whether the producers want us to predict that they're not going to work because Tasha's mood doesn't make any sense at all. Yes, I... I am happy that she acknowledged that she needs to speak to Paul's mum because, you know, it was a misunderstanding on both parts. She never meant to offend her. And I give credit to Paul for standing his ground and saying, you've upset my mum. She feels some type of way. And I want you to acknowledge that. He didn't force an apology, but he wanted Tasha to understand that as much as she felt she was doing what was in her best interest, it wasn't received the right way by her mum, which was good. And also, I don't get... um why George keeps apologizing. I give him credit for saying I'm done. I've apologized enough. I'm not going to apologize anymore. I feel like that relationship should have ended weeks ago. I think the letter that they got at the dinner party where they were being asked that, why are you still here? Was correct because all George has done throughout this experiment is cater to Peggy, apologize to Peggy, try and be the man that Peggy wants him to be. And nobody has given him credit for that. So I give him credit for standing up for himself and saying enough is enough. I'm done. That's it. I'm going. Um, and then I don't get what's happening with Ross since they got home. Something is not right. And I don't get how her sister can say that they look more like friendship vibes or brother and sister vibes. 
I don't get it. Something else happened between Peggy and her sister and the conversation that they must have had that has suddenly made her feel the way she feels about Thomas because I can't fully comprehend where they went wrong, how they went from being, you know, one of the most highly functioning couples in the experiment to suddenly she's uncertain and she's thinking maybe this won't work. It doesn't make sense. I was really surprised at, you know, the spouse's reactions when they met their husband's, you know, a family. I was really surprised with Tasha and Adrian and how they behaved when they met their husband's family. It was nice to see Adrian sort of meet up again with uh, Matt's mom and how well they got along, how she seemed to sort of develop a sense of respect and love for uh, Matt's mom because Matt's mom was open to the idea of Matt moving to be with Adrian because you know that was important to them to start their family it seems Matt's mom has really fallen in love with Adrian and I think this homestay helps build them and cemented their relationship which was amazing to see Tasha, I, I don't think Tasha is as bad as the edits are making her seem. Something is a bit off with Tasha's edits, in my opinion, because she comes across as very dismissive or very abrupt, and that hasn't been how she was portrayed in the first half of the experiment. So something to me shows me that the editing hasn't done her any favors. I know other people might not agree with this, but something is a bit off. Obviously, the producers want a villain, and there's no way they're going to give us the type of villain that we need, because for some people like Erica or even Adrian, they get this negative edit, but it comes with a positive vibe at the end. Whereas Tasha, once they started giving a negative edits, we haven't seen anything positive since then. She, it started off with the Erica situation and it's just got worse as the scenes have progressed. And it makes me question why this is the same thing that they did with Portia and now we're on Erica. I wonder what would happen if Tasha and Paul decided to say we're leaving the experiment if there were still days to go, whether they would still continue the way they're doing or whether they'll bring in another couple of colors so that they could get a bad guy because i don't get why everybody else gets a bad edit and then soon after they get a positive edit to sort of spin off the the negative away whereas with tasha we haven't really got that even though she apologized to paul's mom it came across as a sarcastic po apology so i don't get that with Ross and Thomas, I'm very heartbroken because this is not how I expected their homestays to end. The fact that Thomas had to leave on his own and he was crying and Ross was spiraling because she, I think her conversation with her sister is the one that sent her on this downward spiral. And sadly, this is where she is in the sense that she can't sort of see the benefit of having Thomas in a relationship with her, despite him telling her that, you know, he's open to moving, he is opening to exploring new things, he's at a position in his life whereby he wants to make positive changes. So I don't get why she didn't see that, or I don't get why she doesn't recognize that and is stuck in this, no, this is not going to work, this is not going to work situation and will never seem to make and do or say anything to change the situation that they're in. So it's very heartbreaking. And I don't know what will happen. It seems they said no on decision day because of the post that they had on their state on their Instagram accounts, which is sad. But anyway, thanks guys for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And click the link in my video to watch my review from episode 28. Bye guys.